Okay, very good. Good evening, viewers. Indeed, it is a matter of tremendous ecstasy for all of us as I greet you all, my viewers, straddling across in the geographic, geographical boundary of India and those who are from outside India. I greet all of you on this very, very auspicious occasion. That is, we are going to resume our education pay charcha, and that too, it is going to be the hundred first session. My dear viewers, indeed, a sense of nostalgia overwhelms me on this particular occasion because. If you people can recall those who were already hooked on to our unique and spectacular bandwagon might be able to instantly reckon with us or reckon with the fact that we already concluded 100 session on educational pay charcha and that too in the last year 2023 and thereafter there was a period of interregnum because we indeed we thought that we needed to reflect on the program, on all the program programs already, you know, completed. We needed to reflect on them, you know, wholeheartedly and wholesomely before we thought of kickstarting the session. My dear viewers, indeed, education pecharcha, as you all would appreciate, those who are those who have new newly joined us today, you know, it is indeed, you know, it is for them. Uh, you know, some sort of revelation that education pay charcha is equivalent to educating the nation. In as much as we keep on inviting, you know, topmost achievers from myriad field of specializations as our esteemed guest. And indeed, you know, I do you know in course of our centenary celebration, that is 100 sessions, we have already had exhibited the exemplary sort of convention by inviting you know all sort of mirage achievers topmost achievers from different field of specializations on our on our spectacular show of education picture my dear viewers we have we have had the privilege to invite the civil servants to you know topmost is officers like mr vs sampath sir you know the, the chief chief Minister commissioner of india sri anand kumar singh ji union ho union textile secretary of government of india dr jain singh ji the chief secretary of gujarat of course hunter session our beloved sri anjani kumar singh ji the former chief secretary of bihar so you know and of course you know lot many vice chancellors lot many educationists from 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 different field of from different field of specializations we have already had the opportunity and the privilege to invite all of them my dear viewers indeed so we are just in the second innings we are going to play the second innings and of course again by showcasing one of the topmost you know educationists and that too from agriculture sector and my dear viewers it becomes extremely you know uh, i would say incumbent on the part to recollect a very interesting incident because birsa agriculture university is itself you know the manifestation of that of a grand university here in rachi wherein i had the privilege to visit almost i think six months in the last september when dr o dr om prakash singh ji was the vice chancellor of the university i had just going to invite him you know for our book launch function for our book launch function that is you know for book launch function that is uh, you know and there in course of in course of that very particular program what exactly we know i just serendipitously stumbled upon our very very you know esteemed guest today esteemed guest today that is esteemed guest today dr sri bk jhaji because at the at that point in time a function was going on and i could see the then vice chancellor pouring encomia on dr bk jhaji for you know his unique for his unique involvement in myriad projects and his, you know he was almost singing panegyrics for all his myriad contributions in the field of education i took an you know an instant as well as an immense fancy of that of dr sri ja and consequently we both got you know acquainted with each other and today the you can say the culmination of that particular relationship 
is very much self manifest today because today we are having a, that particular opportunity to host Dr. Sri BK Jhaji for uh, you know this particular so that is 101 that is 101st or 101 say 101 session of education pe charcha. My dear viewers, straight away coming to the point because just a little bit of introduction of Dr. B. K. Jhaji. Dr. Sri Basant Kumar Jha, Head Department of Agriculture Extension Education, Birsa Agricultural University, is a PhD in agriculture bracket extension education, awarded senior research fellowship by CSIR New Delhi. Overall experience one year as bank officer and five years as extension officer and more than 90 year, 19 years as an agriculture scientist. So you can well understand as well as appreciate the versatility that Dr. Sri BK Jha so seamlessly and you know and uh, so seamlessly as well as comfortably and you know means uh, a champions or you know income passes. So in fact statement come to the point Today, I would like to inform my viewers, we are going to have a very comprehensive, a holistic sort of discussion on agriculture sector. Because you all would appreciate agri agriculture forms part and parcel. Rather, I would say it is, you know, it, it is almost 75% of the people are still engaged in agriculture in the country today by way of their, you know, by, by, by way of their living or object of living. So you can well understand India still, despite rapid industrialization and you know and uh, manifold growth of service sector, still the you know the primarily the substantive part of population is still banking on agriculture. But despite all that fact, we are just going to have an insight because we people, despite the nation being an agricultural nation, we haven't, or rather, we are very you know very casual in terms of in terms of you know keeping ourselves abreast with the sort of developments happening in agriculture sector so today's session is going to be very engrossing and very enlightening session on agriculture so straight away now it is a time now to invite dr sri bk bk jaji on our so just go here goes the first question Dr. Jha, we very much welcome you, sir, for this August show of Education Pay Charcha. You are our very esteemed guest on the 101st session of Education Pay Charcha. We would just like to know, here goes the first question to you, sir. What is education as per your perception? Yes, we all welcome Dr. Sri Jha on our unique show of Education Pay Charcha. Please, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Viveka Babu. I humbly accept this offer. I feel privileged to be part of discussion on education pe charcha. We call it Siksha pe charcha with such a great author uh, whose contribution is beyond a doubt. Everybody, every section of the society appreciates his contribution. He is a prolific writer and I have come across uh, so many books he has written because we are in constant touch with him. Whatever development uh, he makes, uh, in the uh, literary world, we are abreast of his achievements. So, sir, I, we are really privileged uh, to have you as our host. And uh, naturally, because uh, when uh, common people, common people, uh, particularly in rural, rural area, uh, sometimes get uh, confused that uh, whether there is any education in agriculture also, because agriculture is such a practice that everybody practices. It is part of our culture. So uh, they take it for granted that there cannot be any technology or innovation kind of thing in agriculture. But uh, for the information of the viewers, definitely so many uh, learned people must have joined uh, this YouTube live program. That agriculture is also a science. It involves technology. And naturally, like any education, it is also education. So basically, first question that Viveka Babu has asked, what is education? So many people have said that education is not for knowing something, but behavior, uh, behaving differently. We basically aim at changing the behavior of the people. In shaping the personality of the people and showing the world, throwing the world open to, uh, to, to the people 
to the student to choose various options available to them from uh, available to them so basically as it is a part of behavior it has something something to do with the psychology psychological process so behave by behavior uh, we mean that uh, it is our response that the life situation presents to us and our response to that particular stimulus. For a common people, we can have uh, the understanding like knowledge, skill, attitude could be a part of behavior. And when we talk about education, these components are integral part of this education. So, okay, uh, okay yes, great. Yes, uh, you want to say more? Sir, you no, want no, to say anything? We can proceed because it is a general topic and uh, people are aware that what is education? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, my dear viewers, we have just heard our esteemed guest, Dr. Sri Jha, was just elucidating as to what education is all about. It becomes incumbent on the part at this particular juncture to remind all my esteemed viewers as to what Swami Vivekananda, the greatest exponent of Sanatan Dharma, rather India, at that particular, I am talking about 19th century, where he showcased the glory of Sanatan Dharma in the World Parliament of Legions. Swami Vivekananda had defined education as a manifestation of perfection already within us that means by we all are you know by, by our identity identity we are all soul so we are omniscient we are ubiquitous we are omniscient we know everything but the moment we you know, we have that realization you know that is that that becomes education <laughs> because the knowledge remains hidden within us and the moment realization downs that becomes education. Fantastic, sir. We very much appreciate the sort of, you know, definition. The so, you know, very common parlance. You try to enlighten our viewers as to what education is all about. Thanks a lot. Straight away coming to the second question, sir. Very, very important question. Is there any formal education in agriculture? Please, your take now. Yes, sir. Surely, sir. When we talk about formal education, means uh, it has some structure, some function, uh, some time frame, some framework. So formal education basically is a organized pursuit that is systematic, that is hierarchical. So like general education, agriculture education is also formal. When we say it is formal, means there is course curriculum, there is structure, there is degree that is awarded to the students. When uh, we say that uh, education is formal education, we something comes to our mind that there is uh, some uh, uh, school or college or university kind of things. So when we talk about agriculture education, uh, internationally uh, it was started as land grant, grant pattern in the USA, but in India uh, attempt was made in uh, last quarter of 19th century and uh, one agriculture college was established which was later uh, at size of it later this was trans uh, transferred to Coimbatore. after that uh, we see that uh, this agriculture education was uh, imparted in engineering college bengal college of engineering uh, offered agriculture education major breakthrough in country came when uh, Imperial Agricultural Research Institute was established at Pusa, Pusa now Bihar, because this is called the birthplace of agriculture education and research in India, old India, the, in, that includes uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh also. After that, in 1906, four more colleges at Kanpur, Nagpur, Alayalpur, and Coimbatore were established. In 1907, one more agriculture college was established at uh, Pune. And just after one year, that is in the year 1908, one agriculture college was established at Sabar. So the agriculture education started uh, taking its shape in uh, pre-independence India. After independence, uh, it was thought that uh, there should be rural universities kind of thing. 
uh, which could cater the needs of these agricultural people, that farmers basically. So it was thought that uh, rural universities uh, could be formed. And uh, based on that land grant pattern, land grant pattern means uh, uh, providing land, granting land to the institution by the government. So first agricultural university was established in uh, Pantnagar, thus while UP, in 1960 on the pattern of land grant college. And uh, 16,000 acre land was granted to that university. Thereafter, uh, many agricultural universities were established at Ludhiana, Bhubaneswar, Jabalpur, Bangalore. And in the year 1970, Rajendra Agricultural University was established at Pusa, again Pusa. One more thing, important thing I would like to share with our viewers, the esteemed viewers, that uh, this Pusa, that is uh, in Bihar, the Samastipur district of Bihar, earlier in, it was in Darbhanga. When there was an earthquake in the year 1934, and uh, the building was damaged due to quake. So it was thought that uh, it's better to shift it uh, from this Pusa to Delhi. And uh, in the honor of that place, this uh, locality, that locality of Delhi was also named as Pusa. So we have, it is in Delhi, it is fam famous as Pusa Institute. So that this Pusa, the year I was shifted to uh, Delhi, uh, carrying same name, that is Pusa and IRI, in 1936. When country got independence, this uh, imperial, initially this I stand, stood for uh, Imperial Agricultural Research Institute. But after getting independence, that imperial world was, world was replaced by Indian Agricultural Research Institute. Now, after the establishment of uh, first agriculture university, there was demand for, from many states that every state should have agriculture universities. Now, result at present result is that we have about 74 agriculture universities, including the state agriculture universities, central agriculture universities, uh, deemed to be universities, and uh, uh, universities with autonomous colleges. So there is huge network of uh, formal agriculture education sector in our country. Great. Fantastic, okay. sir. My, my dear viewers, we have heard so with a with rapt attention, you know, uh, about, the, how, about the evolution of agriculture university and how in the post-independence phase, how agriculture, you know, agriculture university or education pertaining to agriculture actually got formalized or it came into existence. It got the legitimacy and as well as the recognition. Thanks a lot. Now, sir, I'm just coming to a very next question that what are the components of agricultural education? Okay, we have uh, your question is very pertinent, sir. Uh, when we discuss agriculture, uh, a typical an average rural family comes to our mind. What happens or what is happening in that family in a village? There is farmer who cultivates, women farmer cooks, the kids, the children who take care of animal, small animal. There is orchard. There is pond, there is livestock. So whatever enterprises are available with the farmers, every enterprise or every action has transformed into formal education leading to particular day. So when farmer goes to village, he cultivates crop. Crop cultivation involves many processes. So first, uh, and a very important degree in agriculture was B.Sc. Agriculture, Bachelor of Science Honours in Agriculture. We have livestock, so Bachelor of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry. We have pond, so Bachelor of Fisheries Science. We have orchard with us, 
BSc Horticulture, Bachelor, Bachelor of Science in Horticulture. We have homemaker in our family, that is our uh, mother, sister, wife. So for them, there used to be home science, now it is community science. It is cooking, it involves post harvest and value addition, processing. So we have a degree on food processing technology, we take food processing technology. We have agricultural implements that is catered by BTEC Agricultural Engineering. Milk is the end of product that has, that has a maximum processing as far as the proportion is concerned. So we have BTEC Dairy Technology, just catered to processing of dairy products. Then uh, some formal structure like cooperative and marketing, we have BSc in cooperative and marketing. So if you look at the enterprise, the activities that are happening in the village, in the rural areas, there are formal course, formal degree course available with agriculture. Now, not only that, uh, with only at graduate level, Courses are also of postgraduate master's level and doctorate level. At the same time, there is enough provision for training because if we look at agriculture as such, there are many stakeholders. And farmer, farm family rather, is the most important stakeholder of entire funds. And to cater their needs, we develop students. The university system develops quality human resource who serve many organizations, including Department of Agriculture. And Department of Agriculture is one of the big, uh, biggest departments of our Ministry of Government. Okay, sir. Thank you. Great. Great. So my dear viewers, we, we heard the dissection of agriculture in such a candid terms for our the for the clarity of our understanding because we people being absolutely you can say means not absolutely not associated or attached to agriculture there definitely it was uh, you know not only a revelation but indeed a value addition to all of us thank you sir thanks a lot straight away coming to the next question how would you define the multidisciplinary in education yeah, surely, sir. It is also talked about national education policy. In fact, uh, farmer is farmer and farm is farm. I may, may be expert in one discipline, but the farmers have problem in various disciplines. So, the multidisciplinarity just to solve the problems of farmers, the institution needs to be multidisciplinary in nature. It should cater, it should uh, uh, have agriculture college, veterinary college, horticulture college, fisheries college, dairy technology college, like that. We in education policy also talk about multidisciplinary. It is uh, required because the uh, problem has uh, many dimensions. One problem, solution of one problem requires support and contribution from many institutions, many disciplines. So to solve that problem, all the disciplines should be available for the service of the farmers. Suppose a farmer, as I have already told while describing this um, components of agricultural education, even an average farmer has a, a pair of bullocks, a cow, a small pound, some goat, a uni mushroom unit. Uh, he may be facing problem with plant protection, that is infestation of disease and pest. His animal may get sick, that requires the support of uh, doctor. He may be needing some new technology in mushroom cultivation. He may be needing some new technology to keep preserve his uh, uh, products like uh, uh, dairy products or the milk products or uh, fruits and vegetables, even cereals, food grains. So they need support of, uh, from multidisciplinary. 
So now we are approaching research and extension in education is to have a multidisciplinary team and that is appreciated. Even when we talk about the system of agricultural extension, that is how do we serve the farmers? How do we serve the farmers? So uh, for uh, the viewers who are not from agriculture background or uh, related to agriculture, this information may be valuable to them. How this information percolates down to farmer? We have elaborate system. In our next lab, uh, your questions we will talk in detail. But you think uh, we have one person who is in direct contact with the farmers. And farmers ask any and every question from him. He may not be expert of that discipline, but he tries to manage answer. He tries to manage answer. He tries to pool resources to satisfy the needs of the farmers, be it information needs, be it need related to finance, credit, insurance, simply passing on particular relevant information in usable form, in understandable form, is a service. And for that, a person should have knowledge from different disciplines also. So we call it multi-purpose VLW. Earlier, there was one VLW, people might be uh, knowing, they must have heard about the position VLW, village level worker, that is multi-purpose village level worker. He is supposed to, he is expected to solve all the problems, provide all sorts of knowledge uh, to the farms. Of course, with the back-end support, with the technological backstopping of the Department of Agriculture and Industry Technology. Fantastic. Great, sir. Great. Now I'm going to the next question, question very important. Uh, in fact, our viewers would like to know that what was the trigger behind your choosing agriculture as your, you know, as your future career, we, you know, we would just our viewers would just like to know about, you know, your journey since your sophomoric years, you know, into, you know, means uh, graduating into that of an agricultural scientist. Please, your take on this. Yeah, yeah, sir, sir. In fact, uh, in my days, some 20, 30 years back, uh, there were very limited career options very limited career options. So the person, uh, the students who were uh, studying uh, science stream, that biology and math, had only limited options, either be doctor or engineer. If you are uh, pursuing your intermediate in science, you go for engineering. If you in biology, you go for medicines. But agriculture is such a profession which have job, both biology and mathematics. Both intermediate 12 uh, biology and mathematics are eligible for BSc agriculture. At the same time, uh, you can we can have respectable employment after a very short period. Still, agriculture as a career for employment is considered. There is a lot of scope. So for uh, that motivated me that we should I should go for uh, BSc agriculture and. Uh, this is the only uh, profession and uh, enterprise that was, that is, and that will be. Though its form may change, but agriculture, if man has to eat, agriculture has to continue. If you stop eating, agriculture will stop, but that's not possible. So human is the only, especially I was just thinking, that uh, nature has provided food for everybody. Why this man has taken up agriculture? Because this agriculture is the basis of civilization. Other components are only top of the structure. The family settled down, the people settled down at a place only due to agriculture, mind it. So whatever development we see, that is at the foundation of agriculture. So often we say that agriculture is culture. And culture, what is definition of culture? That is the interaction between man and environment. Through human curiosity, human ingenuity, people developed some technology, identified some good seed, sowed, harvested good um, uh, yield, domesticated some animals used it for milk purpose, uh, milk purpose, or meat purpose, wool purpose, cloth purpose, anything. 
So just uh, by simply collecting good seed, planting it, agriculture started from there. We call it June cultivation. Just sow seed, harvest, harvest the crop as long as there is fertility in the soil and move ahead. When the soil recuperates, after some time, you again come and cultivate. So whatever burden of civilization or development is there, that is born by agriculture only. And uh, for the viewers, sir, uh, initially, there was only agriculture profession. Uttam Kheti Madhyam Bhan. Adam Chakri Bhik Nidan. Uttam it was considered the best profession. But uh, after development, we are, uh, we call it uh, the contribution of our primary sector, including agriculture, kept on decreasing relatively, not absolutely, relatively. And people from agriculture migrated to other uh, sectors. And that was need for development. We should not take it in a negative way. That is need of development. If some other sector has to grow, where from the people will come? So for industries, the surplus people in agriculture migrated to industries and they started industrial revolution. Similarly, the surplus people from agriculture have gone to service sector. Service sector is no need. And it, it is a, definitely it's the contribution of agriculture scientists that uh, with very limited number of people, uh, equal amount of we are uh, making, producing equal amount of food bills. So if you look at the figures of uh, developed countries like USA, Australia, the public, the people who are dependent on agriculture is proportion to the contribution of agriculture income to the nation. In India, it is roughly 50 plus, but we are contributing hardly 20%. So that's the problem. And uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, social and political issues raised over agriculture. So that is at the base. And uh, when we look for, a government looks for employment, either in backward linkage, as backward linkage, or in forward linkage, still agriculture as business have a lot of the scope, have a lot of the scope for employment, self-employment, and wage employment, both the skilled and skilled. Great. Sir. Great. My, my dear viewers, when sir was explicating on the career awareness of opportunities available in the agriculture sector. I do remember my times in Calcutta. In those days, as he has very correctly said, the students, those who were pursuing science, they had only two options to pursue. I know either engineering or medical. I tell you, my dear viewers, we were from the commerce background. We only knew uh, if you are from science, you become doctor or engineer. From commerce, you become chartered accountant or company secretary. We have never heard in Calcutta about the overall importance of that of civil service. When we were at the matriculation, or even when we pursued commerce, we didn't you know, even come across the overall the importance of that of civil service, let alone that of agriculture as a career of opportunities you know, for, for, the, for youth at that point in time. But as the time passed, today, of course, as sir has very you know, very accurately and adequately explicated or illustrated on this particular, on the various facts as to why agriculture sector is so very lucrative for the professionals, for those who are very good in mathematics and biology, a proper blend of knowledge of mathematics and biology, biology can go on making a very, very successful career in agriculture. So in few lines, he has summed up the opportunities you know, the ga opportunities galore available in the in, in agriculture sector. Students should lap it up and capitalize on their overall knowledge and skills in biology and mathematics. Fantastic, sir. Now, coming, I'm just coming to the next very, very important question now. Now, could you throw some light on policy change in agriculture education? And of course, vis-a-vis to you know, vis -vis that of the new education policy of 2020, how do you see the implementation of that of change in policy in the agriculture sector? Your take on this, please. Okay, sir. Uh, only thing is permanent that is change. Whether you like it or not, change has to take place. And uh, I'm really proud uh, 
for my profession that agriculture education has kept pace with the changes taking place at international arena uh, before uh, establishment of agricultural universities courses where uh, degree was awarded by general university uh, at that time there was traditional system annual system annual kind of uh, classes practical in exam after establishment of uh, agriculture university a few years after a trimester system was introduced thereafter semester system was introduced now we see in general in traditional university this semester system has been introduced so we some about 30 35 years back we are the product of semester system so we always uh, welcome the changes taking place and the uh, system is so beautifully to it uh, tuned that every stakeholder accepts changes so that is uh, i cited one example that how this system uh, traditional system to trimester system then semester system uh, a student in general you have rightly pointed out or raised a question that uh, what for we should study what for for becoming an intellectual like uh, vivekanand the viveka babu cannot be the aspiration or expectation of many people most of the people they study professional particularly professional course like agriculture for employment simple fact now the question is it was before the policy makers and agricultural scientists that uh, it's really impossible to provide employment to uh, government particularly government employment to all these students so how this policy should be changed how how the course curriculum should be changed so that uh, the students should be ready for private sector and self employment so i am really happy to share with uh, the audience that is connected with us that uh, earlier uh, there was a three year degree of uh, degree program for bsc agriculture after that uh, it was made for four years bsc agriculture four year degree course that fourth year is totally devoted for practical experience and real life experience now in 2015 this uh, last one year course is student ready ready means rural entrepreneurship awareness development use the student ready we call it ready rural entrepreneurship awareness development use the this one year is divided into two semester 7th and 8th in 7th semester students have to devote 10 weeks in village attachment training that farmers live in village they should have practical real life experience of the village so 10 weeks they spend in village with the farmers understanding their problems so that whenever they go to fill um, field as officer or manager they should have better knowledge of problems of the client then another 10 weeks they devote with industries that is called industrial attachment training so first semester a year seventh semester two component that is village attachment training and industrial attachment training they are exposed to the village situation they are exposed to the industry the work culture the working pattern the function the structure of the industry so in in seventh semester he becomes uh, uh, employment ready as far as industry is concerned but that's not the purpose where from this uh, employment will come until unless there is some uh, entrepreneur in the society who will provide employment so eighth semester six month is devoted to entrepreneurship development program which we call experiential learning program ERP under which the students have to choose two enterprise with 10 credit load each and they have to develop business plan 
a skewed development develop, a skewed business plan produce goods and services and sell it to market so that he could feel how an entrepreneur works so the focus is not only to create job seeker the focus is to create job creator and uh, i am happy to say that uh, with the startup ecosystem promoted by the government around 5 and 1/2000 agri tech startup has come and most of the of them from uh, engineering and uh, biotech background a uh, yeah, uh, management background even doctors are coming i was really surprised doctors have are also coming forward to uh, seek employment or self employment or business to explore business potential of agriculture sector so that was very pleasing experience pleasant experience to me that to doctor approached us how can we proceed this is my plan can you will you help us definitely this is our professor we will be helping you so we prepared the students to cater to the needs of industry to cater to the needs of farmers and to prepare the students to develop himself herself as an entrepreneur who can create his huge employment for the society sir my dear viewers our esteemed guest was just trying to throw i was just trying to emphasize the overwhelming importance of entrepreneurship because as he says and we are i'm absolutely endorsing his observation that today it is a time for the you know for job givers rather than job seekers because once you are a job seeker you know you are just looking for employment but as he says it is some it has come to come to me as some sort of revelation that even doctors are looking for an opportunity in agriculture sector sir i must tell you very honestly and unambiguously i didn't have even the foggiest of an idea about the doctors you know trying to find out the awareness of opportunities for entrepreneurship in the agriculture sector so it has been it is a revelation to me and likewise it is a revelation to many of our viewers that how agriculture sector has become so very holistic has become so very prolific in terms of providing opportunities galore even to other professionals or such esteemed professionals like doctors indeed a great revelation now i am coming to very very important for your know, question sir you what are the vocational courses in agriculture because since you have been teach, you know to teaching the agriculture agriculture students or student pursuing agriculture course for so many years together so what sort of vocational courses because if you just try to explain us many of our, our, our viewers might you know might take such vocational courses by you know by way of part time courses as well so your take on this please okay sir surely surely the information is very relevant for the viewers they can share this information if they are not interested they can share this information to their friends to their family members so there are many skill components involved in agriculture which has potential to give you a gardener is earning handsome amount what's a cutting grafting layering the simple technology they are earning a lot okay? and uh, the the urban people must uh, be experiencing that the society or apartment hire some gardener to uh, maintain their garden so we have some uh, courses on uh, gardening gardener training in fact we we can uh, discuss that way we have certificate course we have diploma course we have advanced diploma course we have uh, a vocational course outer bivo course so two important courses uh, at bits um, agriculture university we have been running that is human nutrition and dietetics human nutrition and dietetics in fact uh, i wish to discuss this issue with uh, uh, people uh, who are connected with us just now that agriculture nutrition whatever life style disease we are talking about most of them emanate from poor nutrition under nutrition over nutrition so nutrition is the domain of medical science but we agriculture scientists produce foods which are rich in nutrition 
So there are many technologies, there are many varieties which have been prepared, which have been developed just to cater to the nutrition needs of them. So if the, our food is nutritionally balanced, then the chances of getting this um, lifestyle diseases or a kind of things can be minimized. You must be observing that there is position of dietitian in hospitals. And uh, even uh, people like us, we agriculture scientists and people like you who's a renowned author and chartered accountant are getting the advice from this three-year degree book holder, dietitian. So we provide big book course in human nutrition and dietetics. They, the students after taking degree can work as dietitian. So how much you should eat, what you should eat. So we prepare the students in that. One uh, important uh, course is that herbal resource technology. In fact, both are related to uh, human health that I wish to discuss separately. But uh, as you have raised a uh, pertinent question, so I'm just discussing herbal resource technology. Many herbs have cured for many ailments. And uh, for many diseases, there is no exaggeration that uh, for many diseases, gynecological diseases or stomach related diseases, uh, Ayurveda or herbal medicines are applauded and consumed by the people. So there is huge market of uh, Ayurvedic medicines. Hmm? So we prepare the students for this herbal resource technology. Uh, and these are uh, these two courses are, are of three years duration. We work. Uh, students can uh, get exit after six uh, months with certificate course, one year, one year uh, with diploma case course, uh, uh, two years with advanced diploma, and after three years, three years they will be awarded DVOC. So there are two with two flagship uh, course we are uh, offering to the students. That is, uh, we work in human nutrition and dietetics, and we work in herbal resource technology. As these have tremendous potential, market potential, and employment ready to course we are offering. And simple three months, six months, one month courses, because training has been uh, the usual practice of any agriculture institute or agriculture university for department officers of the department, for farmers, for managers. We have been offering a uh, degree uh, technical training program for them. Sir. Great. Sir, actually, a question readily comes to my mind. It might be out of box question, but nevertheless, it assumes you know huge significance. That's why, because you you are an agricultural scientist, I think it is a it is very relevant question that you know you should explain the you know the the, the, the rationale behind the action taken by the European European countries. Yesterday, I just came across a piece of news wherein around 350 or even more than that spices were banned. Uh, Indian spices were banned in European market. So, the, the, of course, there are many theories which are doing rounds that, you know, it might be a conspiracy on the part of the European Union, you know, just, just not to allow Indian products. So, it could have been a ruse, you know, it could have been uh, just a fabricated logic excuse just to ban the Indian products. Or there, 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 there could be another version as well that in these spices genuinely contain the cancerous proportion. So, what is being an expert agriculture scientist? How would you like to, you know, explain your stand on, you know, on this particular issue of so many, you know, more than 350 spices being banned by the European countries? Please, your take on this. Yeah, yes, sir, sir, sir. There is a uh, many types of war: war in defense, war on border, economic war, business war. So, I, I, I won't like to discuss much. There could be many dimensions of this uh, decision. But uh, you must have heard, not, this is not uh, the question related to agriculture. Jab humne Rome ka mulli chukaya tha. Rome was ready, ready to be sold and our traders saved the Rome. Wo kya tha? Wo humne masala se usko bacha tha, export kiya tha. To, technology, अवेलेबल है वे सब करने के लिए ठीक है हो सकता है कुछ बैच में इस तरह का इशू है आई एम नॉट अवेयर आई कैन नॉट कैन नॉट कमेंट बट इन बिजनेस देयर कुड बी बिजनेस राइवलरी देयर कुड बी अदर इशू टेक्निकल इशू मे बी देयर देयर बट इट हैज वी हैव बीन एक्सपोर्टिंग दिस स्पाइसेस टू मेनी कंट्रीज 
एंड ट्रेडिशनली वी हैव बीन कंज्यूमिंग स्पाइसेस हम लोग कहते हैं कि दिस इज माय पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस कि स्वाद तो हम इंडिया नहीं लेते बाकी तो केवल नमक और चीनी जानते हैं स्वाद जानते हैं भोजन का स्वाद तो हम ही लोग लेते हैं इलायची कैसा है लौंग कैसा है अदरक कैसा है लहसुन कैसा है सो so, ये जो स्वाद है ये स्वाद इंडिया से ही गया है और मसाला स्वाद है स्पाइसेस इन कंडीमेंट्स जो है बाकी जो न्यूट्रिशनल रोल है उसका एंटीबैक्टीरियल प्रॉपर्टी है बड़ी बड़ी अब हल्दी में एंटीबैक्टीरियल प्रॉपर्टी है बहुत सारे मसाले बहुत सारे गुण है उसमें तो देर कुड भी बिजनेस राइवलरी टेक्निकल इशूज में भी देर दैट इज मैटर ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन बट वी हैव इन ट्रेडिशनल हमारा लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी बढ़ता जा रहा है सेवेंटी वन ईयर सेवेंटी फोर ईयर्स हम भी हमारा देश भी तरक्की की राह पे इतना ऊंचा पायदान पे बढ़ रहा है और मसाला तो हमारी दिनचर्या का हिस्सा है ठीक है उसे प्रोपोर्सन जो हो जैसे होटल वाले बना तो देट देर कुड बी मैटर ऑफ डिस्कशन बट दिस इज अवर ट्रेडिशनल प्रैक्टिस बगैर हल्दी के ना हमारा दाल बनेगा ना सब्जी बनेगा अब बाहर yes. वाले भी बोलते हैं कि हल्दी हमारा एंटी बैक्टीरियल है तो हम yes, yes. बैक्टीरिया फ्री रखना अपने स्टोमेक को तो वी हैव टू कंज्यूम टर्मेरी यस You have got the answer, my dear viewers. What sir was trying to say, of course, by way of an insinuation, rather than directly, you know, I mean, sir, recriminating or you know, alleging as to uh, what the sort of conspiracy going on, you know, in the European world, because they are really frightened of India's products. Obviously, in case of spice, as he has said, and very, very appropriately said, that our lifespan is, of course, you know, it is just increasing. and more than almost 70 72 years has become the average life span in india so obviously you know the they you know it the, the the very theory of so called you know means our products having cancerous proportion and all that can lend itself to many multiple interpretations but one two thing is sure as he has very correctly stipulated that indian average life span is very much on you know very much upswing so obviously the sort of allegations or accusations or the sort of labels being already you know the, the level being being imposed or being slapped on our products is you know is absolutely unwarranted or it is unjustified it can you know it it might be owing to the bigger conspiracy that all these sort of things have happened very rightly said sir very very many many thanks since our time constant is very much there my dear viewers i'm straight we come to the next question so very very important how do you correlate very very important see uh, correlate agriculture with entrepreneur entrepreneurship even though you yes. already outlined it but let us know something in detail sir time constant is there again one more yeah, important yeah, question briefly. yeah yeah briefly briefly i will answer briefly i will answer uh in one forum there was discussion that uh, who is farmer the farmer is owner farmer is entrepreneur he is owner of his own resources his own land his own block his block his own tractor so a farmer is a, is a, an owner but dr b k ja is not an owner so entire fiber farmer is an entrepreneur he assumes risks risks he harvests benefits and does everything like a businessman he takes decision and bears the plus and minus of his decision so for all practical purposes he is entrepreneur our question was that how we can create the skill based employment i'm just discussing that mba engineer doctor sir coming and in and uh, entrepreneurship so even those areas are being explored we didn't have uh, the scope for entrepreneurship earlier that is extension services if i advise farmers will is he ready to pay me something so even that area is, is being explored as entrepreneurship otherwise there is huge company if uh, you go for backward linkages that is production of seeds fertilizers pesticides implements that creates huge employment so depending upon your interest a person can choose the enterprise for forward linkages there is huge employment in supply chain management 
as transporter, as cold storage owner, as warehouse owner, as marketer, as IT developer, as processor, as exporter, depending upon your strength and capability, you can choose enterprise. So thank you very much, Viveka sir. You gave me no, opportunity. More question. more question is there, very, yes, very important. Sir. What is the syncretism between education and extension? That means what is the yes, core relationship? Yes, 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 surely, 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 because I am a scientist of extension, it's my bounden duty to answer this question. Extension means uh, the spread of knowledge, the spread of technology that we generate at institute. So agriculture university or agriculture institutes develop some technology for farmers to be used in field. And it is the duty of extension system to take that technology to the farmers to various mechanisms. This is also one of the mechanisms that we are connected. IT could be mechanism, physical training could be mechanism, demonstration could be mechanism, advisory could be mechanism. By this mechanism, we take that technology to the farmers. And for this, there is elaborate arrangement, there is various system, that is uh, the system of Ministry of Agriculture, Department of Agriculture, non-government organization, input companies, public sector business organizations, non-government organizations, civil society, banks, they all work in a big way or a small way to serve the needs of the farmers through advisory services, through input services, uh, through by becoming the spokesperson. Because if you look at uh, the role of extension, and uh, sky is the limit. So whatever you think, this is the rule of extension. I may be an advisor, I may be an spokesperson, I may be friend, philosopher, and guide of the farmers. So this is the role of extension. And uh, for common people to understand that whatever we develop in university, we take that technology to the farmers, various mechanisms. Okay, sir. Great, sir. Now, yeah. Just with a question, last question. Because yes, it just told me, that Dr. B. K. Jha is a professor, Dr. B. K. Jha is an agriculture scientist, Dr. B. K. Jha is a researcher. So you are donning multiple caps or multiple you know, roles you are you are playing you know, in the university. But if given a discretion, given a choice, how would you like yourself, you know, how would you like to define yourself as a professor, preferably as a professor or, or as an agriculture scientist? Just for your time. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the question that uh, needs to be understood by most of the people. Very pertinent question you have asked. The mandate of university is teaching, research, and extension. The mandate of university is teaching, research, and extension. And we in agriculture university uh, have to uh, work on all these three mandates of the university. While I teach, I become professor. While I do research, I become scientist. And while I do extension, I become extension professor. So these three roles, every scientist has to perform. But as you, you have asked that, uh, what would my, my preference to become, uh, uh, to be called, to be associated? So I would, uh, be, uh, I would like to be called as professor because this is the profession uh, which commands respect without using power. That's why I would love to be called as teacher. Fantastic. Great, sir. My dear viewers, today being the 101st session, you have seen the sort of versatility that our, you know, our very, very esteemed guest so seamlessly epitomizes. Today we discussed ins and outs of agriculture sector, the awareness of opportunities galore, you know, associated with this particular profession, because many students yet are not, you know, adequately familiar with the ins and outs of the profession, with the sort of opportunity, opportunities available. So our very, very esteemed guest today has given enough indication has dropped enough hints, even at the different points, explicated on the opportunities available for the students to grab, to, to, for the students to capitalize on them. My dear viewers, Education Pay Charcha has the very altruistic motto, that is to educate the nation.
to take India back to its moorings that is in the erstwhile Bharat Barsa, which were where, where the raison data and summum bonum, you know, where Vedas and Upanishads. Most interestingly, the very, you know, the novel purpose of education pe charcha is absolutely has its own, you can say, roots in that of Chandogya Upanishad, that is Astoma Shadgamaya. Tamso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityo ma amritas gamaya. That is from fall, falsehood to that of, you know, to, from that of ignorance and darkness to that of to, to, to light. And they're from death to immortality. And that, that is the, the primary vision of our, you know, forefathers, you know, based on which the very, the concept of Bharat Barsa was formed the way it evolved, unfortunately, you know, actually we got we got sequestered from our very roots, from our very moorings. And the education Pecharcha is striving hard to recollect India with that of Bharat. <laughs> Therefore, our soul is also based on India's, you know, India's innate values of spirituality, which was espoused by great Adi Sankracharya, you know, by virtue of non-dualism philosophy, later by which was upheld and championed by Swami Vivekananda, and of course by Maharshi Sri Aurobindo's The Life Divine, which too forms the part and parcel of our vision when we try to float this particular platform of Sastrartha, you know, which our very, very beloved valued partner Sri Pramodji, you know, had floated this particular channel just for the good of humanity. And that is the very reason behind, you know, behind conducting this particular education pe charcha. Because one of the professors from Dr. C.B. Raman very recently, you know, just, you know, both of us met in Bilaspur, and he was of the opinion, everybody talks in contemporary times about politics. You alone talk about education. Let the nation you know, get immersed in that of discussions on education. Let us just you know, move. I wouldn't say move away, but let education also be the part and parcel of our very life. That has been the underling mission and vision behind floating education. I would like to respectfully bow to our very, very respected professor, Dr. Sri B.K. Jaji, for illuminating and enlightening today's intellectual deliberation. And therefore, we will keep on, you know, just holding the flag of education pe charcha very high. Again, we'll be back on next Saturday with another very, very esteemed guest, you know, for, for you know, sin, for an intellectually scintillating discussion again on this show. I don't know whether Sri Pramodji is present today because usually we do have the particular provision of just, you know, means of summing up the interaction between me and our esteemed guest in Hindi, but I'm not sure whether Pramodji is present or not. Pramodji is there? Is Sri Pramodji there? Pramodji, hai kya? I think my dear viewers, Pramodji has not joined today because you know of his own personal preoccupation. So uh, unfortunately, uh, nevertheless, actually we have to bring our today's program to a very positive conclusion because again, I'm thankful to our very, very esteemed guest, you know, who has, you know, given his benign consent for the continuation of this program by virtue of, you know, means facilitating some sort of collaboration with that of Education Pechacha and Cisco. I thank our very, very honored guest, Dr. Sri B.K. Jaji for doing the needful. I am thankful to Sri Avinazji for all technical, providing technical collaboration, Sri Chandan Ora and Rohini for you know, preparation of posters and doing the needful at the end of education. I, I, I once again thank all, last but not least, I thank all my esteemed viewers for being you know, engaged or involved you know, with our education. And I, I you know, in fact, I solicit their blessings for the continued success of this program because, in fact, the you know we started this program with absolute you know absolute you know, with an absolutely altruistic perspective that led the education as Gurudev Tagore had envisaged the concept of education in that Tanjali, where the stanza so eloquently speaks 
about the universality, as it says, where the mind is without fear, head is held high. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. Where the knowledge is free, where the word comes from the comes from truth. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. To inculcate in you know in the fellow compatriots the value of the value and importance of truth. Education pe charcha is only serving as a bridge for spreading education, the education based on the philosophical vision of Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore. So my dear viewers, thank you. I, I thank our esteemed viewers. Once again, profusely, I thank my esteemed viewers for you know, enlightening all of us today with all his versatility. And I thank all my esteemed viewers once again, just before returning all of you to studio, again with the commitment to be back again on the same day at 7 p.m next uh, next saturday with another very very esteemed guest avinash ji are you there avinash ji yes sir uh, avinash ji would you like to sum up some the today's deliberation in hindi would you like to say something you know uh, to, on the you know, on today's ongoing discussion between me and dr sri bk jhaji would you like to say something because you too happen to be a part and parcel of agriculture you are a doc you are dr avinash ji if you want to say something, please tell us in two minutes. Share your perspective to our viewers. Please, Avinazi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for providing me the opportunity. Uh, for providing me the, the opportunity to sum up the session. Actually, I forgot that I have to speak in Hindi. So, first of all, I want to give you a thank you, sir. And our Guru, Sri, uh, Dr. Sri B.K. Jha, sir. Ko. ये सेशन मेरे हिसाब से उन बच्चों के लिए बहुत ही ज्यादा महत्वपूर्ण है क्योंकि अभी सर हम लोग जान रहे हैं कि 10वीं एवं 12वीं के रिजल्ट्स आने वाले हैं और बहुत से बच्चे इस उधेड़बुन में लगे हुए रहते हैं कि कैरियर ऑप्शन क्या होना चाहिए बच्चों से ज्यादा उनके जो पेरेंट्स होते हैं वो भी बहुत हद तक कंफ्यूज रहते हैं कि किस अगर मेडिकल में सिलेक्शन ना हुआ या अच्छे इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेजेस ना मिले तो बच्चों का कैरियर ऑप्शन क्या हो सकता है तो जैसा कि सर ने बताया एक बहुत ही ब्रीफ वे में सर ने एग्रीकल्चर में जो कैरियर प्रोस्पेक्ट्स है जो भी एग्रीकल्चर में अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं जो भी लूपहोल्स हैं लूपहोल्स तो खैर ऐसा कुछ है नहीं हम हमारे विभाग में बट हर कहीं कहीं ना कहीं कुछ ना कुछ होता है तो बेसिकली जितने भी सारे सब्जेक्ट्स जो एग्रीकल्चर के अंदर पढ़ाए जा रहे हैं उसके इंपॉर्टेंस क्या है उसके स्कोप क्या है उसकी हिस्ट्री क्या है क्या रही है उसका बैकग्राउंड क्या रहा है उन सभी विषयों को सर ने विस्तार से इन सभी चीजों को बताया तो इसके लिए मैं सर को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहूंगा और साथ ही साथ मैं सर आपको विवेकानंद सर को भी बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहूंगा कि उन्होंने इतने अच्छे तरीके से इस सेशन को अभी तक मैनेज किया है और ये हमारा एक सौ एकवा एपिसोड था एजुकेशन पे चर्चा का जिसके लिए सर आप बहुत ही ज्यादा बधाई के पात्र हैं और अंत में मैं सभी दर्शकों को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद कहना चाहूंगा कि वो हमारे साथ अंत तक जुड़े रहे और उन्होंने इस सेशन को सक्सेसफुल बनाया थैंक यू सर थैंक्स टू ऑल ऑफ यू वी आर रिटर्निंग टू स्टूडियो थैंक यू अविनाश जी थैंक्स लॉट थैंक्स टू अवर डॉक्टर श्री बी के जाजी अवर एस्टिंग थैंक्स लॉट